Hey guys, it's Andrew. Just a couple days ago, I started playing around with the Ramda JavaScript library, which is all about functional programming. I figured the best way to learn Ramda, and really to just learn a functional programming mindset, if you will, would be to jump in and give it a try. And so I came across this problem at work that I thought would lend itself well to functional programming, and uh, let me show you what I did. So I have a set of permissions here in an object where basically we just have the permission name as the key and then a Boolean value as the actual value. Notice that some of these permissions belong to a certain group and the group name prefixes the permission name and they're separated by a dash. So what I wanted to do was convert this structure here to the structure you see down below. I wanted to have an object where each group had its own key, and for any permissions that were not in a group, I wanted a general group, and I wanted those keys to be an array of values like this. I wanted to have a value, which would be whatever that initial key was. I wanted to have a checked property, which was either true or false, of course, and then I wanted a label, which would be that permission name, and if it had a group in that permission name, I wanted to get rid of the group in the dash. This structure was actually required by a React checkbox component to easily set up lists of checkboxes for adding and removing permissions from a user account. So let me show you how I used Ramda to do this conversion. Uh, first, I don't actually like to use uh, Ramda with this capital R. Um, it's nicer if they're just all global methods. In my actual React project, I'm using ES6 imports, so I could just import each method I needed one by one. But here, let's just uh, be a bit sloppy and throw them all on the global object. We'll use Ramda's map object, and we can use r.2pairs to convert Ramda itself from an object with keys and values, the values being its functions, to pairs or arrays with two values, the first being the key and the second being the function. So our function here will take an array which has a key and the value, and this is of course our map function. And what we can do is just say global key is going to equal that value. And now all of Ramda's functions are available globally. All right, so let's go ahead and create our function here. And um, we're going to use the compose method first. Ramda's compose allows us to string multiple functions together. And down here, just so we can see this in action, let's console.log our function here and we will pass it that permissions object. And uh, let me go ahead and just map a key here in Vim so I can easily run this file with the press of a key. Okay, uh, so now if I run this, you can see that we get the error, compose requires at least one argument. Okay, that's good, so everything's set up. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll pass two pairs, and this will just convert our object here from objects to pairs. So if we run that, you can see now we have our pairs here with the permission name, and then we have its value. And so the next thing I want to do is add a label as the third value to each one of these. So let's go ahead and create another function here called add label. And we can use the chain method in Ramda to call two methods and pass the parameter from the first as well as the original parameter to the second. And this is actually not the main use of chain, I believe. Um, I'm still pretty new to Ramda, as I said. I've only been working with it a few days. So I'm not exactly sure why chain does this. However, this seems to be the way to do it um, according to things I've found online. Um, what we can do is I can pass head, which will take the first value of the array, and then we can pass append. And so what happens is we pass an array to add label here. It will call head on that array, but then it will pass the head value and the array both to append to append that to the end of the array. And so what we can do here is map over each one of our pairs and call add label. And now if we do that, you can see we have um, arrays of three items. We have the full name at the beginning, then we have the value, then we have the full name at the end. And this third value here will be eventually the label. Now, this works with our no group permissions. However, we don't want the group dash name here as part of the label for the ones that are in a group. So we have to separate that out if that exists. So for this, we can use the if else function. And so here in add label, the first value to change can be if else. And this function takes three parameters. The first one will be our conditional function. If it returns true, the second parameter will be called. If not, the third parameter will be called. So if we can have a function here that says, is this part of a group? If it's true, we will call our group labeler. Otherwise, we can just call head to get that first value as we did before. So let's create an in group function. And in group can take a string, let's say. It will take this 
string here and decide if it's in a group. Well, we'll make that pretty easy. We'll just look for that hyphen after the group name, because in my example, the group is actually a Mongo ID, and so they're all exactly 24 characters. So what I can do here is say um, in group is going to take a string, and it's going to say string index of a dash should equal, and let's just make this a constant. Um, we'll say group length here, and let's create a constant group length, and that is actually going to be uh, six in our case here. So what's at the sixth index should be that dash. Now, if we just call in group here, uh, this actually is not going to work because what will be passed in here is each one of our arrays. And this is looking for a string. So what we need to do is get the head value in our group here. So what we could do is compose in here. We could compose head and in group, but then we're calling head twice. Um, and we could actually avoid that by composing head outside of the if else. Let's go ahead and do it this way. Let's say compose if else outside of our if else here, we'll call head. Now, obviously then we're not gonna call head inside. So instead we can call identity, which will just return whatever value it receives. So head will be passed into our if else here. The in group will work because it expects a string. If we have a group, we'll figure out what we do there. But if we don't have a group, then we just return the head itself. And we can actually see this in action already. If I just write a function here that returns some string, that string should be the label. So now if we run this, we can see this in action. For everything that has a group, we have this X label returned. If it doesn't have a group, we return identity of the head, which is the first value in the array. So that's good. We just need to figure out how to write a function here that will return the group name. So this is going to receive a string. As we know, it's going to receive this value here. So let's split this string to convert it into an array and then just grab the last value from the array. So let's write a get label function here. And this will take that string. And so we can compose two things here. First, let's call split at. And we're going to split at group length plus one. So we're going to split right after our hyphen here. And then we can just go ahead and get the last item from that array. And so we'll let's replace our x function here with get label. And now if we run this, uh, we have a problem. I've forgotten a parentheses. Okay, let's add a parentheses there. And look at that. Now we have our value, we have checked, and we have our label. So notice that those are the same three properties that we need in our objects here. So now let's create another constant here that we can call keys. And this will just be an array with our keys. So we can say value and checked and label. So now all we need to do is zip these two sets of arrays together. So zip obj is the Ramda function and the object keys will just be our keys. All right, let's see. Yes, it worked. So now we have an array of all of these objects in the format that we want. We have the value, we have checked, and we have our label. Okay, now we have two calls to map here, which means that we're running a loop twice when we really could combine them and do it once. So let's compose these together. We could do that in line, but I will create another function here and we'll just call it convert. And what we can do is compose zip object on the keys and we can compose with that add label. So now this here will take one of our initial arrays, add its label, and then zip it into an object. So now instead of doing two maps, we can just do one, and we will just call convert right there. And as you can see, we get the very same output. Okay, there's only one thing left to do, and that is group these into groups. Now, thankfully, Ramda has the exact function we need, and that is group by. Group by takes another function and it's going to receive each one of the objects in our array here, right? So it's going to receive one of these objects here and we need to return a group name. And so whatever group name we return is going to be the group that those are put in. Now we want to group by our group name, of course. So we're going to have a function here called group name. But what we could do is um, just create a function here quickly to show you how this works. We could return object dot uh, label, for example. And if we do this, and let's not forget to pass group name to group by, now you can see it's grouped by permission. So you can see we have perm one, perm two, perm three, and perm four as the four groups in the object that's returned. Each one is an array with the values that have those labels. 
So that's not really what we want. We want to group, of course, by our group names. And as we know, some have group names, but some don't, and we want to put those into a general group. So once again, we'll need to use if else. Now, inside of if else, we can use our in group function again to figure out whether or not they're in a group. But instead of giving them the first value in an array, we need to give them the value of the value key. So in here, let's just do a compose, and we can use the prop function to get the value of a property. In this case, the property's name is value. So we'll get the value property, and then we will pass that to in group, and that will decide whether or not we are in a group or not. So now we pass two other functions here. One is going to return the group name, and the other is going to return general. And if we just have two functions that return, you can see right here we're already getting to where we need to be. We have general here, which is the two general permissions. And then we have group for these group permissions. So now we just need to split the group name and use that. And once again, we can use pieces that are familiar to us. Let's do a compose here. Let's start by doing prop.value, which we just did. So we'll get that value property. And now let's do split again. And we can use the same split at method we used before. So we'll split at but instead of splitting at group length plus one, we will just split at group length so we don't get the hyphen. And then we have an array, and so we'll get the first value in that array, which is the head value. Okay, so now if we run this, you can see that this is actually the final version. This is what we needed. So we have an object that has group one and an array of group run permissions formatted nicely so that I can use them in my React checkbox component. And of course, we have the same for group two, and then we have a general group at the bottom. So is this the best way to solve this problem in Ramda? To be honest, I really don't know. Like I said, I just started using Ramda a couple of days ago, and this is the solution that I came up with. Now, I can imagine that when you're using small pieces in this way, there are probably several ways that this could be done. If you have some way for me to improve this code, I'd love to hear about it. But I expect to experiment more with Ramda and a composition style of functional programming in the future. So I'm hoping that as I do, thinking in this way will become more second nature, and I'll be more productive as a programmer because of it. Well, that's all from me for now. If you have any comments, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you later.